By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to continue with the Fallen Empires tournament. So you've already seen the four games that I've played with my deck, the Unlikely Alliance in the group stage. Now if you've missed those episodes and you want to see them back, click on the info card that's appearing right now and that will take you to the playlist with all the matches that I've covered from this tournament. But right now we have already reached the semi finals and we are going to see Alexander West Scott from Canada take on Joop from the Netherlands and I believe Alexander is on a black throw deck facing Joop with a mono white brew. Now before we go to the games I'm just going to go quickly through both of these decks. Now if you want to go straight to the games as always you can find a timestamp in the description below. Click on that timestamp and that will take you straight to the games and here we are going to start with the deck decks. We are first going to look at the deck of Alexander. And this is the deck of Alex and it's called Unholy Hecatomb and as you can see it is a mono black thrall deck and um, I'm just gonna highlight a few cards that I think are important for this deck um, starting by with the uh, thrall champion. Thrall champion is a 2-2 creature, 1 black and 4 to cast. It gives all the thralls plus 1 plus 1. Now you're probably thinking listen up it's 5 to cast that's ridiculously bad. A Lord of Atlantis is 2, Goblin King is 3. You're absolutely right. But hear me out, the Thrall Champion is the only Lord in Fallen Empires and it's the only creature, or one of the only creatures, that has an effect that it can pump multiple creatures in the game at once. So that makes Thrall Champion very powerful. Now the fact that it's 5, I don't think it's going to matter that much because believe it or not, despite the fact that there are a lot of small creatures in Fallen Empire, it's actually a pretty slow format. So I think that um, you know we'll see Thrall Champion hitting the board and when it does it's going to have an impact. Now a card that Thrall Champion works with really really well is the card Breeding Pit. Now Breeding Pit is an enchantment for one black and three and you can see there on the picture it's between the Armor Thrall and the Darylor and what you have to do first you have to pay two black during your upkeep or it gets destroyed so you kind of have to get that out of the way but then during your end step you get a 0-1 Thrall token. Now of course these 0-1 tokens become 1-2 creatures because of the Thrall Champion. So you can already see that you know uh, the, the cards are making each other stronger. There's synergy here. That's of course what you have with a tribal effect. Talking about synergy, next to the Thrall Champion you've got the Abent Praetor. Now Abent Praetor is one of my favorite creatures in Fallen Empires because it's just so weird. It's 2 black and 4. It's a 5-5. Five five. It's a summon avatar. It's got Trample and First Strike. And during your upkeep, you put a minus two, minus two counter on Abin Praetor. And you're probably thinking, wow, that is really bad. Six mana, and then your next turn, it becomes a three, three. Yes, but hear me out. During your upkeep, you can also sacrifice, you may sacrifice a creature to remove the minus two, minus two counter. Right? So then it becomes a five, five again. If you've sacrificed a throw in this way, you can put a plus one, plus O counter on um, the Abin Praetor. So that means that if you have your Breeding Pit in the game you can sacrifice one of your little 0-1 throws and you can make your Abent Praetor a 6-5 trample first strike next turn 7-5, 8-5 and so forth. So that kind of makes the Abent Praetor a lot stronger. Now remember there are not a lot of big creatures in Fallen Empires so having a creature with more power and toughness than 3 is already quite strong. Uh, talking about creatures with uh, with good stats, let's take a look here. We've got a full play set I believe or just three of Darylors. Darylors is one black and three so four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That's extremely powerful. Um, it does have a downside though because it taxes all your black spells with one extra black. So you have to pay one extra black per spell. Um, now when we look at the rest of the deck there are there are tons of other cards that I can highlight but I don't want to I don't want to make this deck deck too long uh, just one thing I'd like to note um, I think the IO piles there's a play set of IO piles in here like in almost every deck in this tournament I think is going to be very very important in this particular matchup because Alex is going to play against uh, a mono white deck so he probably has to face the Order of Lightburn. Now Order of Lightburn has protection from black so that's a huge problem for Alex but when he has an IO pile, he can sacrifice the IO pile to deal two damage and destroy the Order of Lightbird because the IO pile is colorless damage. It's damage from an artifact. So it's not a black spell or a black card. So 
Um, I think IO pilots are going to be very crucial. So that's just something I want to highlight. And also looking at the sideboard of Alex, I think Order of the Ebon Hand will probably come in after game one because it's got protection from white. So that's going to be another key card in this matchup. Okay, so this is the deck of Alex Unholy Hecatomb. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And this is the deck of Yoop. It's called the Visible Hand, named after the full playset of Hand of Justice. Now, Hand of Justice is just ridiculously strong in this format. Uh, let's kind of zoom into this creature, shall we? So it's one white and five. It's also a summon avatar, by the way, just like the Ebon Praetor. And it is a 2-6 creature. Now, the toughness is actually quite relevant because one of the best ways to remove creatures in Fallen Empires is using an IO Pile, which deals two damage. So it's not going to take care of the Hand of Justice. And the other top removal spell is a Dwarven Catapult. Now, Dwarven Catapult is red and Alex is not playing with it. But I just want to mention this because also with the Dwarven Catapult, it's extremely difficult to kill this Hand of Justice. Now, besides the fact that it's got great defense and it's a great blocker, it also has an, a unique ability for this set. You can tap it and then tap three other white creatures you control to destroy any target creature. Now... This may not sound that strong, but in a format where removal is so difficult to come by, having it repetitively, being able to do it on, and for example, every end step of your opponent, just killing one of his creatures, it's extremely strong. And it's it's understandable that Yup has decided to play the full playset in his deck. Now, when we look at the rest of this deck, we kind of see what you would expect more or less from a white weenie build. We see Ecation Javelineers, Ecation Infantry. We see, of course, the Order uh, of the Ebon Hand, which I think is going to play, uh, sorry, the Order of Lightbird, the playset, which I think is going to play a very imp important role in this matchup. Now, another interesting card here, I think, and there's a full playset of those as well, is Veril's Zealot. Now, Veril's Zealot is this interesting card that has an ability that you can just repeat over and over again. It's, it's two white and one to cast. It's a 2-2 summon Townsfolk, and when it attacks and when it's not blocked, you can choose to have it deal three damage to target creature. Now, this may not seem as much but if you for example attack and your opponent only has a one power blocker you know like a one two or a one one he's basically forced to block the zealot because if he doesn't the zealot can kill him anyway so there's kind of the synergy and then if you maybe have like the the, the priest on the battlefield i believe it's the occasion priest uh you can pump your creature or you know they're they're also this is one of those cards that looks kind of weak but I've played against it, and trust me, it can become a really, really big problem. So Feral Zealot is actually a very strong card. Another one of those cards is uh, the Combat Medic. So he also plays with three Combat Medic. It's an O2 creature for one white and two. And um, it, it has this ability that seems neglectable because you've got to pay a white and a one to prevent one damage from any target to a player or a creature. Um... But it's actually not, because there are, there are a lot of combat situations in Fallen Empires, and combat medics can be crucial. Another really good thing about the combat medic is it can prevent damage from any source. It doesn't matter if it has protection from white, for example. So if Order of Lightbur, uh, sorry, Order of the Ebon Hand, I keep mixing these two creatures up, I apologize. If Order of, uh, of the Ebon Hand attacks and is not blocked, you can still prevent the damage from it to you as a player. So when you say, okay, you're getting two damage from the order of the Evan Hand. You can actually use Combat Medic to prevent that damage. Um, so I, I think that's quite interesting. It's kind of a loophole um, that that allows you to protect you from, from that damage because I, I think in this matchup, Order of the Evan Hand and Order of Liber will play a really crucial role. And if the white player is simply able to withstand the early game, which I think he should be able to, he can then deploy a Hand of Justice and just start killing off uh, all the creatures uh, of Alex. So when I'm looking at these decks, I'm not sure who's the favorite because we're, we've seen some strong, you know, for example, the Himtoturix from Alex's side. If you can get an early Himtoturix out and maybe maybe hit some lands or hit some crucial cards, that could be a big problem as well for Yoop. So it's definitely going to be, I think, a tight match. So looking forward. Um, let's go to the games and, and see how this uh, semifinals is going to end up. Game number one, and as you can see, we have Alex sitting on the left with his mono black thrall deck, and we have Yoop sitting on the right with his mono white deck, Hand of Justice playset deck, I guess, uh, the visible hand against Unholy Hecatomb. And there we see players getting their opening hands here. 
and really curious to see uh, how this is going to unfold and if the Pump Knights are really going to play such a big part in this matchup. And I think Alex is keeping and is Yup also keeping as well? Yeah, I think he is. That means we're good to go here. And it looks like Alex is on the play. I don't believe he has any one drops in the deck actually now that I think about it. So just passing turn playing a revised Swamp and a revised Plains here. Ecation um, Javelinier. It comes in as a 1-1 creature with a Javelin counter. And uh, here you see the card in play. And when you tap, you can remove the Javelin counter to deal one damage to any target. So it's actually quite strong. Usually it means you can use your Javelin counter to just kill a creature. And then you have a creature left on the battlefield. There we see the Basil Thrall by Alex. A 1-2 creature you can sack for 2 black. And here, ooh, Order of Lightbur. Here we have the first Pump Knight hitting the battlefield. I think this is going to be interesting. Alex will need an Isle Pile to kill this now. Or else. Remember, it has protection from black. So there's not much that Alex can do about it. Playing his third Swamp... Will we see an IO pile? I believe this is the Mind Step Thrall. We see it in the, on the screen here. Mind Step Thrall is kind of that Hypnotic Spectre from Fallen Empires. If it attacks and is unblocked, you can sack it and force your opponent to discard three cards. And Yupi's just attacking here with the Order of Lightbur. Going in for two, your poss possibility to pump it to a 3 1 with that two white mana. The question is is he going to do that? And uh, it looks like he's not. So he's going to 18 and then he's tapping two to play another Order of Lightbur. Wow. Wow, things are not looking good for Alex here. Interesting to see, by the way, that uh, Yup has missed his land drops. Only two lands in play. But uh, it's already looking quite sketchy for, for Alex. He really needs an IO pile now to take care of at least one of these. Orders of Lightbird. The problem as well is that he can now he cannot attack at the moment as well. He cannot put pressure on because if he attacks, uh, you can simply block his untapped Order of Lightbird. And because because it has protection from black, it doesn't even take any damage. So it would just be kind of a suicide mission for the thralls of Alex if he would swing in now. And he's not even playing out anything here. This is pretty rough. Not even a Daralor. Or another, another type of thrall attacking now, coming in for four. That means he's going to drop to 14. Actually, is he pumping it now? That would mean he goes, no, he's not playing another Order of Light Burr. Oh, my. It, it looks like he just has a full playset in his hand or something. And and then, in that case, uh, Yoop only needs two mana. I mean, if you've got all the order Orders of Light Burrs against the Mono Black deck, you don't really need more than two mana. But let's see. Let's see if, uh, if Alex can find a way out of this uh, this hole somehow. Tapping five. What are we going to see? What we see? There's Thrall Champion. So we talked about Thrall Champion in the deck deck section. So it gives all the Thralls plus one plus one. That means he now has a three, two, and two, three. And that's also the reason why he's attacking. He knows if he blocks on the Order of Lightbur. Um, of course, the order is not going to take any damage, but at least the thrall is not going to die. But of course, Yoop still has that javelin counter on the Ecation Javelineers. I believe he's now blocking the Mind Step Thrall, and he has the ability now to deal an extra damage with the Ecation Javelineer, killing the Mind Step Thrall. I do understand, though, um, the decision from Alex, because you simply have to do something. You cannot just, you know, sit back and think, okay, if I don't attack, I'm just slowly going to die. I mean... He doesn't really have an option here. So that means uh, at least at least he's dealt two damage. Yup is dropping to 18 life, but he's also lost his mind step throw there. And the question is, what is Yup going to do? Will he attack full force or will he just attack with two orders of light burr and keep one at bay? Remember, he's still very low on mana. So I don't think we're going to see a hand of justice this game. And I think for Alex, it's it's he just needs to get rid of those orders of light burrs. I mean... But that's, that's just huge. It's so hard to remove creatures, uh, destroy creatures in, uh, in Fallen Empires only. And in the meanwhile, we've seen an uh, Ecation uh, Infantry and an um, Ecation Priest hitting the battlefield as well. And uh, Alex is dropping to 8 here after taking 6 from the Orders. And yeah, things are looking really, really bad for Alex's first game. 
And this is just, I think this is just being unlucky because, I mean, Yup is very low on mana, so usually that's a good thing. But yeah, when he finds three orders just in the early game, there's not much you can do when you're playing mono black. You just have to hope that you draw into uh, maybe your order of the Ebon Hand to put some pressure on him, or at least um, finding one of the IO piles. He's playing with the full playset, but I haven't seen a single one yet. And obviously he's kind of in the tank here, looking at his cards, trying to find a way out of this, knowing he's only on eight, so he probably just has one more turn left. Decides to attack nonetheless here with a 2-3 creature. I think if, if, if I would be, yeah, I would just take the damage here, because you're on 16, or an 18, so you can drop to 16, it's no problem. Uh, tapping two more, we will see something else. Ooh, Soul Exchange, that's quite interesting. So it sacrifices a creature, but it, re it gets removed from the game, and then it brings a creature back. And if a throw was sacrificed this way, you actually get a plus two, plus two counter. And also a Darylor, look at this. So actually, the, the cards that Alex is drawing are not too bad. His deck is kind of doing what he wants it to do. The problem is those three orders of Lightbur, because if I look at... Um, at, at the creatures of Alex, he's got a 5-5 Darylor, a 3-3 Thrall Champion, a 5-5 Mindstab Thrall. I mean, that's pretty impressive. But all these creatures have protection from black, so he's going to drop to 2. And I wonder if he's going to pump it. He's not going to do that playing an IO Pile. Wow, and now it is completely over. Of course, IO Pile, he doesn't have the mana yet to use it straight away. Uh, he's still stuck on just two lands. Can you imagine that? So this whole game, Yup has been stuck on two lands, but because of those orders of Lightbur, he's been able to completely crush Alex. All that Alex can do now is do an Alpha Strike, just attack with everything, and he's just probably gonna gonna chum block. Uh, although he doesn't even have to. Or yeah, Alex has one card, so I guess it's worth it to just to chum block. I mean, I don't think there's any card in Fallen Empires that can make Alex deal that kind of damage, but still. Uh, and that's it, that's it, that's the first game. Um, yeah, it's really MVP orders of Lightbur, and I think Yup is showing it here now by showing the two planes and the three orders of Lightbur. That was really what this first game was all about. So hopefully the second game is going to be a little bit more diverse. So let's give Alex and Yup some time to dive into the sideboards, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, and we have Alex on the play with his uh, Thrall deck, Unholy Hecatomb. He needs to win this one to stay in this. This is the semi-finals, remember. Whoever wins this will advance to the finals of this Fallen Empire Constructed Tournament. And Yup starting here with an Ecation Priest turn one. And then it's Alex's turn. Let's see what he can do in turn two. Of course, he can sack the Evan Stronghold if he wants to for three mana. He's not doing that, casting a him to Turek. Ooh, this is very powerful. Early game, this card can be such a killer. Let's see, rolling the dice to see what cards he will have to discard. So number four and number one, or number two, I guess. And we see a basic planes in an IO pile. Aye, that is really tough for Yup. Attacking again here, and Alex is dropping to 19. But look at that, Yup has missed his land drop. So it was very crucial for Alex to hit that basic planes. There's an order of the Ebon Hand. Oh, this is really tough for you because he must be looking at his graveyard and go, all my answers are in my graveyard. That second land, the IO pile, everything. And uh, let's see, casting a armor throw now. Attacking here, an armor throw is actually a great way because you can sack it to give a plus one, plus two counter to a creature. So it's also a great way to defend yourself from those IO piles, by the way. And again, no land for you. So it's looking really tough for him already. He needs to find land ASAP, just playing an Ecation Infantry. There's the attack from Alex, and he's now able to pump it. Let's see if he's actually going to do that. Making it 3-1, making it 4-1. So he's dropping to 14. You're taking 4 damage, and he needs land. That's what he needs. Not finding it. Passing turn again. This is really rough. And uh, let's see. Attacking here again with the 2-1. Probably just going to pump it up, making it a 5-1. That means 5 damage. Going to drop to 9 here. Yup's found his second land, casting an IO pile. That means that next turn he can try to kill the order of, um, of the Ebon Hand. But remember, he also has an armor throw, and now he's attacking. And is he just going to pump it up again? So making it 4, making it 5, making it 6. Second, the armor throw, making it 8. I don't think it's enough, though. I mean, he's still on 1. 
I mean, second, the armor thrall makes sense because it protects um, the order of the Ebon Hand um, from the Iopal, and I guess they're recounting now. And I think this is where Alex realizes that he is just one point of damage short. At least that's what I think. Four, five, six, oh, seven, I guess. I guess he's too short because one of the uh, lands came into play tapped. So seven damage. That means he's stuck on two. But actually, Alex, it doesn't matter because remember, the Order of the Evan Hand just got a counter. It is now a 3-3 three, three creature. And that means that one IO pile is not enough. So what Yub needs now is an extra planes and an IO pile. I think that's what he's pointing out. He's lost his game number two. What a quick game this was. So game number two is goes to Alex. That means it's 1-1. One, one. And we're going to continue for game number three to see who's going to make it to the finals. Game number three. So this is going to be the decider. Now we're going to see who is going to make it to the finals of this first Fallen Empire Constructed Tournament. And who can crown himself the Fallen Empire King? And there we see Yoop on the play here, playing a Ruins of Troikar. Passing turn, there is a basic swamp from Alex. And will we see an order, I wanted to say, and there it is, an order of Lightbur. Ay ay ay. and things are all looking already looking bad for Alex here. Is he able to play an Iopile? No, he's not, but he is able to play him to Turek. Very strong card, and we saw what the him to Turek can do in game number two. So let's hope for Alex that it can be equally decisive in uh, in the second um, or decide, deciding game, game number three. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. And there we see an Ecation Javelinier gone and the 2-4 Bander. I forgot about the name. Uh, ooh, another Order of Lightbur and also an Ecation Infantry here. Ay, ay, ay. This kind of reminds me of game number one where Yup was able to also deploy his orders very quickly in the game. And there we see a Basil Thrall here by Alex. That's not really going to help him. There we see an Ecation Javelinier. And swinging in again. Also pumping it up. I think dealing 5 damage now. And Alex is dropping to 13. He needs to find an Io Pile to at least kill one of the two orders. And let's see. He does have that uh, Sack Land to his disposal. And there is an Io Pile. So this is at least good news. And also a good news, good news for, for the game. And able to sack, of course, the IO pile quickly, taking care of one of the orders of Lightbur. And maybe you're wondering why he's doing it now. I guess he's he's maybe afraid of having to face a combat medic or an Ecation priest. Anyway, attacking here, dealing a tons of damage still to Alex, so he's not out of uh, out of the woods yet. He's on eight at the moment. Remember, the Ecation Javelinier can also tap and deal one damage with that counter on it. So, so you could say he's on, on seven instead of eight. And there's a Thrall Champion. He really needs an IO pile. He just needs to get rid of that, of that order. I mean, he's going to take tons of damage now. Look at that. Going from eight all the way to three. And with the Javelinier. So he's kind of on two now. And tapping everything. Oh, this is cool. At least being able to cast the Abin Praetor in the semifinals. That is one of my favorite cards in Fallen Empires. Thank you, Alex, for making that cast. Uh, attacking now with, you could say this is his Alpha Strike. Attacking with what he has. And the next turn, Yup is going to take this game. Because there's no way for Alex to prevent the damage from the Order of Lightbur. He's only on three. He's going to attack, going to pump. And that's it. That's it. So, uh, Yoop, congratulations with this victory. You are the winner with your Visible Hand Mono White Fallen Empires deck. And you're going to advance to the finals. So, um, that is pretty exciting. So, you can still become the Fallen Empire guru, I guess. You know, the big man when it comes to the Fallen Empire set. Um, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks. This time we had some tournament play for you. Let me know what you think of the expansion set, Fallen Empires, if you haven't done so already in the previous matches that we've uh, we've shown you from this tournament if you want to support the channel you can do so by liking this video leaving a comment subscribing if you're not a sub yet sharing this on your socials that really helps 
Um, and of course, you can also support us or support me and the channel financially by becoming a supporter on Patreon. So you can become a patron. There's a link popping up right now. You can click on that link and that'll take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Just have a look, you know, have a look, see, see what you get when you become a member. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. And this was actually or is actually uh, a patron only tournament that you're seeing right now. Anyway, thank you for watching and let's take a look at the end scroll. Let's take a look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.